Welcome to episode 29 of Discovering Nagasaki from Local. My name is Chad. In my ongoing weekly vlogs, you can experience everyday life in this scenic and fascinating part of Japan. So far, only Denise Rollheiser and Daniel Hazen were able to correctly answer the first of last week's vlog questions. The second question was a little more challenging. The first question from last week was, what year was written on the Ziploc bag of the Morohe in the freezer? The answer is 2020. The second question from last week was, if you exclude the baby, how many people were clearly not wearing a mask in my Chinatown video clips? The answer is seven people. Two girls at 918, one man at 953, three boys at 1149, and one man on a motorcycle at 1334 in my last vlog. The baby I referred to appeared at 1015 in my last vlog. And now for this week's crash course in kanji root particles. Group P kanji root particles include water, eternal, seek, far, grief, complex, Close, mourn, long, tremble, family, low, people, increase, outside, and protector. I will cover group Q kanji root particles next week. Anyone who has an interest in Japanese food, fine arts, or martial arts, will benefit from a basic knowledge of kanji. Please support this vlog channel by clicking on the subscribe button below, ringing the adjacent bell for update notifications, and clicking the thumbs up button. In today's vlog, I will show you how I cook a spicy braised burdock dish that is referred to as kimpira. I will also give you a bicycle tour of the area around where I live in Omora, Suzuta Valley. Let's get started. Here's a vegetarian dish for a change. To make two large servings of kimpira, I will use about 150 grams of burdock, three carrots, three tablespoons of mirin, one and a half teaspoons of salt, three tablespoons of soy sauce, about 150 grams of sesame seeds, three tablespoons of brown sugar, a small amount of chopped togarashi, and two teaspoons of sesame oil. Before I cut up the burdock, I will remove the dirt and skin with a metal scouring pad and water. Then I'll use a knife to cut off very thin diagonal slices of burdock, just like this. Next, I'll stack these slices and cut off narrow strips prior to braising. Now I have to soak up these burdock strips in water for five or six minutes to soften them up. I'll cut up the carrots in a similar fashion. First, I use a knife to cut off very thin diagonal slices of carrot. Stack them up and then cut off narrow strips, just like before. Here are all of the carrot strips. The burdock will take longer to cook than the carrots, so I will add two teaspoons of sesame oil to a heated fry pan. and then add the burdock strips to the pan by hand. After braising and stirring the burdock for several minutes, I am ready to add a bit of water to keep them from burning. They are well cooked and soft now.
Next, I'll add all of the carrot strips on top of the burdock. And continue to stir with a wooden spoon. Now the carrots have softened up and are well mixed with the braised burdock. Next I will add some more water. Followed by the salt. The sesame seeds. sugar, the midden, and the soy sauce. The order isn't important. Now I need to continue stirring these ingredients with a wooden spoon. The sauce has already started to caramelize and the dish is ready for something spicy. The last thing I need to add to this dish is some red togarashi from our garden, like the ones in this plastic bag. I've used three small ones like this and I've removed the seeds prior to chopping them up. Now I'll add them to the fry pan and continue stirring. If you prefer, you can replace the togarashi with chili peppers. You can also replace the midden with sake or rice wine. A couple of minutes later and it's ready to serve. I'll transfer a small portion of this kimpira to this moomin plate. And serve it with some tamago rice. Kimpira. It's delicious and quite easy to make. Try to make it yourself sometime soon and let me know if you like it. I'm on my bicycle now, and that's my farmhouse down below in Suzuka Valley. Nearby, the construction crews continue to work on the bullet train line. I'll ride down this hill toward the house to show you the view. This road used to be straight, and now it winds under the bullet train platform ahead. Five hundred meters in this direction is Route 34, which leads to Suzuta Market on the left and Omura on the right. I'll do a U-turn here and head further down the valley. My house is just up this incline on the right. About 300 meters away is a small bridge which spans Suzuka River. It's just up ahead on the left. I just spooked an egret feeding in this river. As you can see, there is farmland all along this valley, and it's mostly for rice. In the distance, you can barely see Rainbow Road. It's almost two kilometers away. I'll show you the view from the top of this road on the left, and then take you to Rainbow Road. It's a rather steep hill. This is the view that I show at the beginning of all of my vlogs. Here you can get a great view of the terraced rice fields below. On the 
left side of my bike and further up this hill are many large farms that grow cabbage, corn, broccoli, tobacco and mecon. Beside this farmhouse and along this narrow country road you can see a lot of bamboo trees locally referred to as a takebayashi. Now I'll head further down Suzuka Valley toward Rainbow Road. I'm about 200 meters away from that bridge up ahead and the access ramp to Rainbow Road. This part of Suzuka where I live is called Ogawachi, the first three kanji on this bus stop over here. It means small river inside in English. By bike it takes about four minutes to ride from here to my farmhouse. I can't show you the whole trip there, but I can show you most of it. A few of the rice farmers on this end of Suzuka Valley still do their planting and harvesting by hand. Just below the house up ahead is a small plantation. I'm not sure what they're growing, but their trees are still a bit young for harvesting. On the right you can see the Suzuka River winding down the valley. Although this road is narrow, cars don't even slow down when they approach oncoming traffic. Occasionally you'll see drivers retract their electric side view mirrors to avoid losing them. These rice fields, like most in Japan, are used for less than five months a year. These fields lie idle for about seven months a year. Up ahead is a bridge which is a local viewing point for fireflies or hotaru. They appear every year here in early June. Here's another small bridge over the Suzuki River. Okawachi has a very small community center just ahead on the left. It has a sign on it which reads Hotaru no Sato or Firefly Country. And now for this week's challenging questions. First, what is the name of the Moomin Valley character on the serving dish I used for Kimpira? Second, how many bridges did I cross during my bicycle tour video? Be the first to correctly answer both of these questions in the comments section below. I will announce the first three people who do so at the beginning of episode 30. You can find a complete list of the contents of my vlog episodes on the Facebook link listed below. Today's B-roll involved cooking, so in episode 30 my B-roll involved baking. See you next week.